Bloop. Thank you, Dokie. Hello. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and why you look like you've just taken on a gladiator and <laughs> That's lost? That's a new line from him. Uh. Oh, sounds serious. Go save yeah. that woman. I'll go, but. Cool. Right. Now let's have a look. See. I love your clothes. Oh, actually, right. Let's let's. Exotic. Oh, is it her? Oh, it's her. Oh, you're here. I'm so and uh, there's a. Uh. Oh, stop it! No, please go on. What was that? Some kind of joke? If it was, it wasn't funny. I take back what I said. Let's just forget. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll see. We'll go through a couple more loops and see what other options we have there. Stop muttering like Madea over a cold. Oh, two thousand. Yes, please. Yes, please. We can steal two thousand. Uh, Aurelia's diary. She boasts about scamming Yulia and Ulpius and hopes Maliolus wins so she can pay him a tribute in exchange for Sentius's villa. Dear Diary, today I'm celebrating. I made the easiest thousand denarii I've ever made by selling a way out to a desperate fool. Of course, it may not have been the way out she was hoping for, but Hemlock still counts. That'll teach her for insulting my hair. And since I didn't break the golden rule, I may have to try this again sometime. Dear Diary, it worked again, and now another thousand denarii richer thanks to Ulpius and his desperation to escape. Of course, there's very little to spend money on here, but just having it gives me a little thrill for a brief moment. Finally, I have something to spend my money on. Maliolus is running for magistrate tomorrow, and he's promised that for a sufficient tribute, I'll be able to move into old Sentius's villa once it's vacated. How he plans to achieve that, he wouldn't say, but still, I'd better make sure he wins. Hmm. Well... The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. May as well, right? That's going to solve our money problems. That will solve all of our money problems going forwards. <laughs> or at least a good amount of money problems. And uh, if we ever need any more, we can just grab another 2,000, so... Seems like a good idea. Can I, like, talk to him here? He looks busy. A little bit. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, I guess I don't need to tell him about that every time, right? Oh, wait. Salve, friend. <laughs> Mind telling me... Oh, I'll, just, oh. I'll just do it. You? Oh. You can skip through it, so it only takes a little bit. Is this the way up to the bluff? I just noticed it. Wait, where does this go? This goes spirals down to that path we were at before? Uh, not exactly. No, that's way lower. So yeah, we have 2,000 on hand now for whatever we need. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Can't leave the path. Okie doke. Who's this? Have we spoken to this person before? I don't recognize them from behind. Unless it's this. Oh, it's. Oh, never mind. It's Equitia. We can approach this from this way. So there was a chest over here. Oh, I can jump in the water. Okay. But how do I. There's a chest, like, literally right here, but I don't know how I'd get out. <laughs> Hello? 
Don't mind if I do. Although I have so much now that it doesn't really matter, but still. You are glowing very brightly, friend. Is this supposed to be like a, an Adam and Eve kind of thing? The one apple on the tree of the knowledge of good and bad and it's tempting him or some shit? I don't know. Kind of looks like that. Is there anywhere else to go? No uh, secrets, no little underwater paths or anything. Does not appear to be. Like, there's the golden butterflies there, which mean I can get out of here somehow. I just don't know how. None of the none of the buttons are doing anything. Just need some rock climbing equipment or something somehow? I don't know. Hello, don't think we've spoken to this guy before. Oh wait, no, this is... This is... What's his face? Glirious. Salve again, friend. I went and did as you asked and... It worked. Great. How is it possible that you've just arrived here and you already know everyone and exactly what's about to happen to them? Uh, I mean, maybe he'd believe me now. I'm reliving the same day over and over. Uh, you're toying with or me, not. right? <laughs> Wait. Wait, no, he you're is. You're kidding, are you? He is believing me. That's the only way you could have known. Nice. You're a bit like, oh, what was his name? Sisyphus. Yeah, that's the one. Old King Sisyphus. How so? Sisyphus was a Greek king a long time ago. For daring to think he could outsmart the gods, he was given a terrible punishment. He was forced to push a great boulder up to the top of a hill. Only, just as it reached the top, it would roll all the way back down to the bottom, forcing him to start over and over and over again for all eternity. Just like you. Actually, now that I think about it, there are a bunch of old stories about the gods punishing people by making them do the same futile task over and over. Tantalus was made to grasp at fruit on a tree he could never quite reach. The Pelides had to keep fetching water in a sieve. Maybe that's Tantalus oh, down. And Ixion was strapped to a wheel believe. going round and round forever. But on the bright side, at least you're not stuck in the underworld like they all were. Anyway, I, I don't think know I which am. god you managed to upset to get yourself into this position, friend, but... You seem all right to me. So, I'll tell you what. I'll keep doing whatever I can to help you. And you just focus on finding a way to break the cycle you're in. I think I am stuck in the underworld. And I think that was the the ferryman down the river Styx that I spoke to at the start. You're a good man. Oh, that's kind of you to say. Now, I'm going to keep your secret. Although, it's not as if I'll remember this next time we talk anyway, right? <laughs> Oh, and if our conversations ever start to annoy you, just tell me you're busy. I know when I'm not wanted. May fortune smile on you, friend. Nice, I guess that's going to be a way to skip his dialogue when we come in then. If we, uh... If we want, that's cool. Hey, there's actual animals. Hello. Honk. Goose eggs. A bunch of goose eggs laid by the city's goose. I'll take it. Not sure what I need that for. Do we have anything that's said anything about that? Uh, meet her in the baths. Ask the merchants in the forum for clues about Virgil's secret admirer. Right, we need to do that. An armed man has just arrived in the city. I'll need to stop him. I may need to get creative. I wonder if we could tell the armed man that Quinctius is in 
the little round temple thing that the other woman walked into and died. Help! Yes, you I know. A man you have to do. All oh, right. Any ideas threatening Virgil? Are you serious? This is an emergency. Are you going to help or? Uh, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I have to. Do not go in there. What? Why? Just trust me. <sighs> All right. Um, fine. Come and find me in my bakery instead. Please be careful. Okay. So we've saved her life. Is that going to collapse now anyway, or...? It doesn't collapse, so I guess someone walking in is what makes it collapse, so maybe we can now tell him that Quinctius is in there, and he'll walk in and it'll collapse on him instead. Stop right there. I, I really like his, uh... Yes, we can! I really like his voice. I saw him worshipping in a small round shrine just inside the city. Second building on your left. Thank you. For your service to the Empire, I'll let you live for now. But you'd best make sure our paths don't cross again. Sweet. Okay. I'm huge brain. Enormous mega brain. Over brain. Dum dolly dum. Dum da da dum da dum. I'm going to follow you so I can get your bow. I would like your bow. Yes, I would like your bow. Just head on into that little building. I would like your bow. You're gonna die and I'm gonna have it. Ho ho ho. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Filthy lying degenerate. <laughs> Wait, he didn't die. Oh, wait. What? He did die. I don't know how. He, it, none of it hit him. <laughs> what? Also, I didn't see this before. Beware. Shine may collapse at any moment. There's literally a note on the door. How did... Okay. Uh, well, I'll have the boat. Thank you. Uh, bounty notice. Emperor Nero has ordered the execution of Quinctius with different colored eyes. By order of Emperor Nero. Oil... Or, oil? Oil? <laughs> All loyal sons of Rome are ordered to hunt and execute the arsonist and murderer Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, a citizen from the Aventine district of Rome. He's about 40 to 50 years old, he's average height, average build, dark hair, and has one green eye and one blue eye. He's typically clean shaven, he is a known associate of cultists, and suffers from delusions of grandeur. Hmm. Take the arrows. Uh, is that one denarius? <laughs> it is literally one denarius. All right. All righty. So the baths are now safe. Wait, let's go talk to this woman in the bakery though. Uh, not here. What's this? Shopping list. A things of all. A list of things Decius plans to buy once he's escaped. Get out of here. Villa on the Aventine, Rome, two horse chariot, seat on the Senate, four horse chariot, villa on the Bay of Naples, ten horse chariot, twelve slave girls, pale and plump. Ugh. Lots of people fans of Minerva, apparently. Wait, you don't have different coloured eyes, do you? No. You there. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I couldn't help but notice that fine bow you're carrying. No idea how you managed to get your hands on it, especially in the light of our dear old magistrate's ban. But I'm impressed. And before you ask, no, I wouldn't dream of trying to buy it from you. I have no use for a wooden bow myself. But I would like to propose a joint business venture of sorts. Oh yeah? Go on. Tell me, do you have any idea how people here end up as golden statues? The statues come to life and fire golden bows at them? And golden here I was arrows. thinking I was the only one to figure it out. In any case, supposedly one or two of those arrows is enough to turn a full-grown man into gold. Now, of course, that is a travesty. A terrible, horrible waste of human life, which has to be stopped. And yet, on the other hand, I can't help but think of a tale told by that Greek fella Aesop. The goose that laid the golden egg. 
with the ability to transmute organic matter into gold, one could create infinite wealth. Use your imagination. Golden animals, insects, trees and plants. The Midas touch without the drawbacks. We are talking riches beyond imagining. And even if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, half of infinite wealth is still infinite. Interesting. Uh, I think the Golden Goose is meant to be a cautionary tale. Look, I might have skimmed over that one, but don't be so pedantic. Are you interested or not? Uh, sure. Excellent. So the first question is, how do we get our hands on one of those golden bows? Now, I have a plan. But first, tell me, are you familiar with the story of the goddess Diana? Not really. No problem. Allow me to explain. Diana is our goddess of the hunt, the moon, and the underworld, depending on who you ask. The one thing priests and poets agree on is that she carried with her a golden bow and a quiver of golden arrows. And it just so happens that there is a shrine of Diana in this very forum with a prominent statue of the goddess herself. And would you like to guess what she's holding in her hand? Golden bow? Precisely. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in that temple staring at it, trying to figure out how to retrieve it without breaking you know what. But you want me to? Oh, gods, no. If you tried that, we'd all be dead within moments, I'm sure. No, here's what I propose. You give your bow to me, I cover it in a thin layer of gold leaf, and we create a replica of a golden bow. Then you enter the shrine, extinguish the braziers, and under cover of darkness, swap out the fake for the original. It's not theft exactly, it's more of a, a trade. But make no mistake, this is a dangerous path, and there's no way of knowing where it will lead. But in my experience, all the best adventures begin with a risky first step. Now, you must have questions. Ask away. Uh, kind of sounds like just a roundabout way for him to get a bow and me not to have one. <laughs> Why can't I just take it? Because the gods would see you, of course. Hence, my proposal. I feel like sneaking under the cover of darkness wouldn't really stop the gods from seeing us, though. I'm more of an ideas man, whereas you're obviously the more resourceful and heroic type. I have complete confidence in you. When Prometheus stole fire from the gods and became a hero to all mankind, do you think he was worried about the danger? Uh, Prometheus was also punished for eternity, if I recall correctly. Only because he was silly enough to get caught. <laughs> so, are you in, partner? Uh... Wait, what? Tip, if you don't like action or horror elements, feel free to decline. Uh, that's worrying. That is very worrying, but I kind of want to see what will happen. But I don't like horror. <laughs> Action I'm good with. Horror? Not so much. Uh, sure. Let's see what happens. Wonderful. Now, if you'll hand over your bow, I can get started applying a layer of gold leaf. This is a quality weapon. Now, bear with me for a moment. And here we are. A gold leaf bow. Fake golden bow. A composite bow covered in gold leaf. Now, I've gone and unlocked the shrine of Diana for you. So as quick as you can, head on inside. It's just at the end of the street on the left. May the gods not watch over you. Okay. <laughs> How is this going to become a horror? This was locked before. Uh, that's not great. That is not great. <laughs> Fell on deaf ears. Statue of Diana, the ancient Roman goddess of the hunt, the moon, and the underworld. This place is covered in cobwebs. Okay, now swap out the fake golden bow for the real one. We did it. Is that you, partner? Do you have the bow? Did he just lock the door? Wonderful. Just go ahead and slide it under the door for me and I'll unlock it for you. You motherfucker. You locked me in here? A little bit slow, aren't you? 
Yes, I locked you in. And until you give me my bow, you're going to stay in there, like Tantalus in Tartarus. How is this not against the golden rule? You said you'd split the riches between the two of us. <laughs> no, technically, I never said that. I said, if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, infinite wealth is still infinite. It's hardly my fault if you can't tell the difference between a hypothetical and a promise now, is it? <laughs> oh, I do love a good loophole. Uh, how can I trust you after you've double-crossed me? You're just going to have to take your chances, I'm afraid. The bow, now. And don't even think about giving me the fake one. I'll recognise my own handiwork. Uh, even if I gave it to you, you'd probably just leave me in here. Forget it. Hmm. I would reconsider my position quickly if I were you. I'm not sure if you noticed, but you're stuck in there with a hornet's nest, and they can be rather aggressive toward intruders. You know, some say it takes 27 hornet stings to kill a man, but I always wondered how anyone could have known that. Let's find out if they were right, shall we? Okay, what happens if I shoot the nest? Oh, right. Golden bow. Oh, sick. Okay. I have 22 golden arrows. Now I have 34 gold. Right, it's just any arrow is a golden arrow with this bow because it turns things to gold. Oh, this is sick. Holy shit, this is a massive game changer because we just have this forever now, right? Like, this is a permanent upgrade that we're going to be able to take through all the, all the future loops with us. A sponge stick. A small stick with a sponge attached. Why do I feel like I need this? This must be what the Romans use instead of toilet paper. It appears to be for communal use. Best to put this back immediately. Ugh. Ugh. I could, did someone not mention something like that? I could have sworn I remember someone talking about something like that. More arrows, more cash. People have found their way down here. Oh, I can create a platform! Right! Oh wait, can I use it whilst I'm in the water? I can. Ha! Huh. Very cool. This is such a game changer. What is that? <laughs> I guess I can't get in there. Tip, take a look at the scroll nearby. Ooh, I missed it. Navia's Journey, Volume 1. Hello. My beloved Galatea, I write this so that one day... When we're finally together, you will understand what I've done and why I had to do it. I'm not going to put it down. I want to call have me it up. Mad or a monster, but I don't care what they think. Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing for you. I'll start at the beginning. Soon after my arrival here, as I walked down a corridor lined with golden statues, I thought I heard a whisper behind me. A rasp of air, as if vocal cords of metal strained to say a word or two. I tried to dismiss the idea, tried to concentrate on my work as the city's medic, but that tortured whisper haunted me. Weeks later, in the hallway to the bathhouse, I heard it again and found myself drawn to the statue of a Roman woman wearing a stola. Her face was contorted with anguish and fear, and, disturbingly, it was as if she was looking right at me. As I walked past her, I heard that strained whisper again. And turning back, I discovered that, even though I had moved, she was still looking right into my soul. That was when it dawned on me. This was no statue. This was a woman trapped within that golden prison. Naturally, I told the others, but when I could not reproduce the results of my experiment, they would not believe me. But from that moment on, I knew the full horror of this place. Immobilized within these statues, 
are living human beings. It was that day, my love, that my heart broke. Rip. Man, it is very, very, very smart of them to pop that tip up on the screen if you missed the scroll to tell you, hey, take a look at the scroll. Because that is uh, clearly something you want to hear. And yeah, I just missed it. So very, very pleased that they would add that in. Ah, oh, we'll be able to climb up. Right, 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 right. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't jump this gap, can I? Oh, I can. Never mind. It looked, I thought it would be too far. But it was not. Oh, man. Lovely jubbly. So this is how, yeah, this is how we'll climb up the side of that building. even how we will climb up right here. Oh shit. Huh? This is so neat, man. Now, the question is, where are we going to come out? Also, uh, can I, like, put this away? <laughs> uh, golden bow... How do I like, how do I like lower the bow? Because if I'm walking around with a bow out in a city where weapons aren't allowed, that's not going to go so great for me, you know? Find a way into the palace? We're in the palace? Oh shit. Why is there a, wait, hang on. Like, this is a very clear, like, thing here. Okay, this is a, this is a loading screen. Um... So is the palace, like, fucked? Like, why is there just this gaping hole in the side of the palace? Down into there. Uh, can I, like, move this or anything? Hmm. Whoa, there's filters? What on earth? Ah! Uh, <laughs> Why would anyone... <laughs> Weird. That's photo mode. I just never tried. Okay, so... There we go. It's left and right on the D-pad to pull out torch, bow, and put them away. What the fuck? What the fuck? I mean, she's already gold, so I can't do anything to her. Yeah, this place is fucked. What the shit? You're not supposed to be here. Ah! Uh, I'm dead. Let me die. Please, you. Kill me. You. This Peeled statue. Oh no! Oh no, she peeled the go- Oh, that's grim. That's grim. That's very grim. Can I eat some bread? <laughs> Just I feel like I should be able to eat bread to restore health. I Just I can't get in here. Make it, stop. it said reach the upper floor, right? Uh, Help us. 
That's so creepy. Can I, like, no, this is... Oh, I just missed the first time. Or did I? Oh, it just takes a couple. Thank you. Man, feels bad to be these guys. Whoa! Okay, well that was terrifying. <laughs> See what they meant about horror. Jesus. Okay. Garum, a fermented fish sauce used as a condiment, gives off a faint salty aroma. So she retreated to the palace and then everything got fucked. Oh, hello. Good thing we've got all these arrows, huh? Like, what was she doing here? Uh, that gives us the height we need, okay. She, somehow everyone in the palace except her is gold. So we can get up there. We're going around here. Wait, there's a way. Doesn't seem to want me to get up there. Oh, there we go. Oh, so that was just a way to skip those two guys if you didn't want to, I guess? But you had to use more arrows just to get past them, and then you also skip the chest, so that doesn't seem to work. Man, I was not expecting this at all. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, bro. Man, healed statues. She tried to scrape away the gold to get to the people inside. But they were all made of gold. 
So she was like peeling their skin off. Ugh. But how did she survive? Bad idea. Oh, I thought he was dead. God, it's so hard to aim this. <laughs> Fuck all of you. Right, it said there was a scroll nearby. Key to palace doors? Hello. Yes, please. Navy Navia's Journal, Volume 2. My beloved Galatea, after I learned the terrible truth about the golden statues, I wandered the city as if in a nightmare. What must life be like for these poor souls, entombed in gold, but kept alive somehow? Trapped in their own personal Tartarus, consigned to eternal torment, too horrific for any sane mind to comprehend. I tried to offer them what small mercies I could. I began to talk to them, to keep them company. I'd imagine backstories for them, give them names, and tell them of the world, of the histories and stories I'd learned as a child. As the others became more concerned by my charity, I sought solitude from them, preferring the company of my tormented charges. Discovering a way into the abandoned palace, I began to spend my days walking its halls and sharing with its occupants ancient tales, my mind turning to those of Apollo and Daphne Perseus and Medusa, and Pygmalion and Galatea. Pygmalion, the sculptor who fell in love with a beautiful statue, and who, praying to Aphrodite for aid, discovered that his beloved Galatea had come to life. It was then that I heard you whisper to me, Galatea. Yeesh. Forgive me. I know that is not your real name, just one I have borrowed from a story but when I turned to look at you, I saw the most exquisitely beautiful woman I have ever known. Your face forever frozen in a look of haunting sadness. Our meeting gave me new purpose, to free you from your golden prison, so that I might one day hear you speak, not just whisper your true name to me. So I gathered tools for the long and difficult task ahead, barred the doors to this place, and set to work. Wow, okay. That's, that's sad and worrying. <laughs> Man, okay. Well, unfortunately, we are going to have to leave off here, uh, which is kind of in the middle of a pretty, pretty major bit so uh, I am I am apologetic for that but uh, it is I'm out of time so I did not expect this to be such a big thing <laughs> this was like yeah it just all sort of ran into each other and yeah it's, it's a major it's a major set of findings and discoveries and gameplay and all this so uh, yeah it looks like this custom made rack has been used to hold down golden statues and peel the golden layer from them gruesome Ugh. poor people well Yes, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, if you could leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the videos around, share the playlist around if you can. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time when we continue on through the palace for more The Forgotten City. Thanks again. See you then. <laughs>